and then it took us two hours to get from the that's how bad traffic is in new york it took us two hours to get from the airport to where we were um which but don't worry jason passed the time by telling terrible dad jokes there was a couple in there that were pretty good though so did you hear about the bacon cheeseburger that couldn't stop with its jokes? No. It was on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> but how does a penguin build its house? It glues it together? <laughs> <laughs> Why is Peter Pan always flying? Because he never lands. Oh my. Listen, no. how do you get a Kleenex tissue to dance? You put a boogie in it. <laughs> On June 1st, I think we should take a second as a team to discuss how fucking dope May was. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, right? Yeah, Can we just for like a crazy. second talk about just how cool May was? This is what? Times Square. This is time, That's time, Times Square. It's New York. You're in the middle of skyscrapers everywhere. It looks like the middle of downtown Nashville, but for miles. Going as fast as I can go. <laughs> I tell you how New York, New York is. The first time I ever came here, I seen two street meat vendors getting a fist fight. It's like five in the morning, because they don't shut these things down till like four or five in the morning. And then they'll crank them back up if they don't got a breakfast at like 11 or 12. These things are always bar, going. Bar. And they'll fuck around and be out there waiting on that bar crowd about 4.45 in the morning. I seen two of them straight full blown. I mean, I say fist fighting. I mean, like looking like the yeah. goddamn Notre <laughs> yeah. Dame logo Literally. in the middle of the street. You know what I'm saying? New York's one of those cities that I've actually liked more and more as I came to it. Not every city's like that. Some cities you go back to a couple times, like this place fucking sucks. Cool thing. Not cool thing is, you'll never feel about New York City the way you feel the first time. We got fans that are listening to your album. They're on the last track now. Um, so what we're going to do is once they're done with the last track, you can just kind of barge in. Yeah. And we have Maxwell and Crystal, uh, two of our Z100 uh, radio DJs in there that are going cool to sit down and interview with you and talk to the fans. But I, there's somebody, I'm, there's got to be somebody else who knows how it feels. You know how it feels to be hung over in a church pew? No? I think this dude does. What y'all think about? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jelly Bro! There he is! <laughs> what are we thinking about? What up, Jelly? I talked to Garth Brooks the other night at his one night show in Hold Vegas. Hold on for a second. That was a name that you just dropped. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Pick out one up. Pick out one up. I'll try to make that the only one today. <laughs> <laughs> but I talked to Garth, and when he sang a song called The Dance, which is historically like one of his biggest records, he was on stage, 4,000 people, and he started choking up. And I watched him bite his finger to try to keep from crying. That's a trick if you've ever been to cry, by the way. Bite your finger. And I do it all the time. But uh, I watched him bite his finger, and I knew that trick. So when I seen him, I said, man, that's crazy. I, I cry every time I sing Save Me. Does it ever get better? Because he's been singing the dance for 30 years. I've been yeah. singing Save Me for two. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's yeah. like, he's like sometimes it gets worse. Yeah. The cool thing about my music is it's not for everybody, but there's something for everybody in there. You know what I mean? And that's the that's thing right. is that, and that's kind of what I live by, is that I know that I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but I'm a shot of whiskey, and every now and then you need one. Yeah. Oh, oh, or try to turn them on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Amen. Hey, there Amen. it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for being a part of something thank that I heard when you were Oh my God, dude. So, that is so fucking welcome, sick. Welcome to the city, bro. Thank you. This means more than you. You know, that's a big thing in our family. <laughs> thank you, family. Mama. That's real. Thank you, mama. So, Put it on YouTube somewhere, you probably find it. He really wasn't. Oh, I'm killing! Deal. Because I want one of your McNuggets. It's a commercial. Okay. I want one. Brand new Ford Chevrolet. Yes! Beans on the third day. You look really good with red light on you. You know what I realized, and I don't know why this surprised me, 
but I realize that I don't think New York City has a country station. Bailey's gonna come out of that Broadway show tomorrow night and be like, I got it. I'm gonna be a Broadway person. Whether that's an actor, or a producer. We landed in New York today and oh my god, I am in love with the city. We did all of the crazy extravaganza things we had to do today that are work. And now we get to go play a little bit and I am gonna go walk around in Times. I hate traffic. I'm gonna go walk around Times Square and get to know the city a little bit more. We are in, we are uh, right outside of fucking Times Square. Right outside Times Square. Square. Yeah. Square. Never been to New York. First time. Oh. Gonna go prance around the city. I've never been north of the Mason Dixon line, so it's, Me either. it's fun. This is a whole new experience. One of my goals is to get a really, really good slice of pizza. That's what I'm here for. Oh, wait. Also, side note I have a fear of the. Um, to dress up people, things that wear the costumes and the heads, and I know this one behind me, and I don't want to talk about it. This is crazy. This is crazy. Sorry, bunny. We're not talking about the Vegas strip like it's nothing, <laughs> but we are. <laughs> oh gosh, it's really bright, but like just like fun because it's like it's night, but it's bright in like a different way. It's bright in a neon way instead of bright in like a lit up. <laughs> That when the first one they ate, I didn't eat that one because I had her eating a hot dog before that. I had a street hot dog. It's actually, pretty good. It was a, it was, and then they don't have like, you know, down here you get like Heinz, like mustard. They don't have that shit up there. They have real fucking mustard. Like, it's real deal. Oh, they don't have the two. They have all Pepsi. They don't fucking like Cokes up there. I learned that too. I guess, I guess like in the South, we're the only ones that just like Cokes like that. So. It's just like neon. There's so many colors and like so many people. It's so different. This is the biggest city I've been to by far. And I guess I'll just explore the city and eat some pizza. I'm the most excited I've ever been about a thing ever. You've never seen me this enthusiastic. I am ready to eat pizza. We out here. We out here. We out here in New York, y'all. I've been dreaming of this moment since I was like a little kid, so I'm so excited to just see how surreal everything is and feels. I think I could totally rock living in New York, but only for like a year, maybe two, because I'm I'm a real country girl. I want cows. I love all the billboards. Yeah, well, we're in the car. Jonathan said that Jason's on like four of these billboards, but I haven't seen it yet. Also, I love that there's like a diversity of style. I think it's cool. Like I just want like, a couple like past me, like and like a suit that's hot. And then the next thing I see is like shorts and tank tops, and then you see like pajamas, and you're like, oh, what? Like, it's like, wow. Yeah, we just started dancing right here. <laughs> <laughs> Make some money. I'm hot. Like, fuck me, it's like, fuck. <laughs> Dude, I love this like older, like mid Victorian architecture. Yeah. It's not quite Victorian, but like, it's just enough. Like the um, the church sign right there. Yeah. Dude, the like that. big cathedrals and stuff yes. like that. And like yeah. the uh, what's it called like the rims on the balconies and everything. Yeah. Yeah, like the just like the design and like the cement. I feel like we lost that. M and M. I said I don't know if it's raised, but I see a sign that says pizza, and that's where I'm going. I know what's going on. The Blizzard Boston Show. The Boston Blizzard. It's the Blizzard Show. No. Okay, so four slices. Four slices. Where we in?
Man, we have raised pizza. What y'all know about it? World famous. It, so far, size is a check. <laughs> they got a little garlic over there. After Good Morning America, I finally got my first slice of New York pizza and I'm ready to go back. I won't eat pizza in Nashville anymore. It was greasy and it was dripping grease all over my hands and I thought I was going to burn myself. Cheesy and delicious. And I put some peppers, dipped it in some ranch because pizza cannot be eaten without ranch. <laughs> I like it. I like that it don't have a lot of sauce on it, so it's not like super thick. Yeah. I have never been more hype about something in my life ever than getting New York pizza. Because I've had pizza from Nashville, I've had pizza from LA and Vegas and Chicago. And it was like I have to cross this one off the list before I go to Italy. But I put all all the things on it and I got them little what are they called? The little balls of the dough and the garlic and the sauce and the stuffs. But they were delicious. And it was, I thought it was going to burn my hand off because it's a little greasy. A little, a lot greasy. But I made a taco pizza. It was fire. Jumbo cannoli taco. <laughs> We're going to go find a, a subway. I'm really excited. Oh my god. Listen, pet peeve in life. I don't like toes, but apparently when you're on the subway, there's these guys that like, let me show you. So they're like homeless, so like on crack, and they like put their feet out on the subway, and they like wiggle their toes at you, and they're like, hello. And I don't want to deal with no crusty, musty, dusty toes. We actually, so funny story, we actually, it, me and Blake did end up going on the subway. At that point, we started walking everywhere because it was literally easier to walk than to drive because of the traffic. So we were like, fuck it, we're going to learn how to do the subway. And honestly, it wasn't that bad. I mean, it's a little, it's a little gross down there. I'm not going to lie. But no, I didn't see no toes. I didn't see any of those, but I didn't, I mean, I didn't see a lot of, like, homeless people either, which was, that surprised me, because I thought that's where they would, like, live, you know, but no, like, once you learn for, like, and so, to swipe, it's $2.30 a person, and you could go literally miles, like, you could go from Manhattan to Queens and stuff like that, it's crazy, yeah, so, if you can figure out the subway system, it's a game changer, literally, it's way cheaper than Uber's. Pizza! Oh, we got raised. It was fire. We got cannolis for later. I'm so excited. But then, he didn't love me enough to get me donuts, so I got cannolis. But then, we decided to keep on trucking back to our bus. We are in the center of Times Square right now. Like, yeah. the center of Times Square. Our bus is right there. It's a fun night. It's gonna be a fun morning. And I don't know what to expect. I don't really know what's happening. But I'm excited to wake up and see where the day takes us. So. Let's go, good morning, America! Which uh, which camera is the camera that will be so my, that's my close? Your, that's your main close up.
Yes. Take off, but we'll, we'll lock this motherfucker. Now to the improbable rise of Jelly Roll. The former inmate turned country music sensation. His soul-stirring lyrics and hard knocks life inspiring countless fans to hold on, seek help, and begin to heal. What is happening? That's what's going through my head. Right? In, in Nashville. <laughs> now he's selling out the Grand Ole Opry. Now he's selling out Bridgestone Arena. What is this moment meant to you, man? I think I stop every day and try to think about it. I couldn't have even told myself in my juvenile cell this was going to happen. I could have never guessed. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Why do you think you mean so much to people? I represent overcoming. I represent the guy that wasn't supposed to make it making it. And I think that's how we all feel sitting at home, right, is that there's a, like this glimmer of hope when a guy like me makes it through the cracks. When I was that kid in that juvenile cell, I thought that's all I'd ever be. I thought I'd be inmate 00364950 the rest of my life. That's what I would have assumed. Hey, what are you doing that fight? I need you to tell me. Oh, Thank you, Jelly. I'm going to try to get my vocal warmed up before I got to sing. Love y'all. Thank you. So Jason was doing an interview for Good Morning America, and we were sitting there, and I happened to look up, and I saw one of his billboards, and it was like in the middle of Times Square, like a big one, and I freaked out. I was like, Blake, look at this shit. So I like took a picture the best I could. I did that moment, you know. And I'm like sending it to my dad. I sent it to Donna D. Ford. I sent, I, I sent it to everybody that would take it. I was like, he's in Times Square. So that's, you know, that's cool. So, you know, it's, I grew up with like the pictures I would have of Jason were like book shots. So it's cool having a Times Square picture, <laughs> you know. My spoon was shouting. My stomach had two holes in it.
Welcome back to GMA3 from a tumultuous childhood in and out of juvenile detention centers and prison. It's one of the biggest winners at this year's CMT Awards. Our next guest is just getting started on his road to superstardom. He is the man. The Billboard Emerging Breakout Artist has built a massive fan base with his inspirational music and has garnered more than 4 billion collector streams. The man himself is here to tell us all about his debut country album. Please welcome rapper turned country star singer, songwriter, Jelly Roll! Good morning. We are so excited to see you. <laughs> I'm excited the studio to be here. is filled with so many people here. I know, ain't this awesome? Yes, yes, yes. first congratulations. I wonder what to this you. was. I, I hear the racket, I wonder what was happening. Now I see it. It's oh, all you see that, and it's all for you. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, this is not supposed to be your story right here. Man, I, 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 woo, man, from your mouth to God's ears. Yeah, I heard you uh, said in the past a street kid that didn't have any self worth. Mm. Talk about that. You know, I've, I've realized in life, of all the emotions that one can feel, the worst two are probably helplessness and hopelessness. Mm. And there was a time in my life I felt both. And to be able to turn that around and find myself and, and, and be able to figure my life out and chase my dream and my passion and, you know, even it's just, it's just to be, even just sitting here talking to you on this big, beautiful blue couch is wild. <laughs> you know? So humble, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about your story, though, because, I mean, you really have an incredible story. For about 10 years, you were in and out of juvenile detention centers and prison. You uh, had charges from aggravated robbery to dealing drugs. And you say music was your way out of mm. trouble. This song you're going to sing for us today, you say this is the most important song to you on this album. Yeah, I think this song is, you know, I've seen a statistic last year that said 11 people overdose and die in the United States of America every hour on the hour, 24 hours a day. And that just broke my heart. And I realized that I know so many he's and she's that were victim to that statistic. Mm. And the more I thought about it, I just felt that we need to attack that problem more head on. We look at addiction in this country as a personal problem, and it's not a, it's not a personal problem. This is a community problem, and we need to figure it out as a community. Wits at Chapel is available everywhere music is sold and streamed, and make sure to check out our GMA3 playlist by scanning that QR code right there on your screen. You can hear some of Jelly Roll there. And now, performing she, Jelly Roll. Woo!